What is up, everyone? Welcome in to the Golden Edge Mailbag. We are two of your Review Journal Golden Knights beat reporters. I am Ben Goats. You can find me at Ben S. Goats on Twitter. He is Adam Hill. You can find him at Adam Hill LBRJ on Twitter. We're here every week answering your burning Golden Knights questions and or taking your burning Golden Knights comments. So make sure to at one of us on Twitter if you've got a question or comment. You can email me at bgoats at reviewjournal.com if you've got a question or comment. Or you can comment right now live on Facebook. We will try to read as many as we can on air if they do come to us while we are live. So if you've got a question or comment, throw it in there, we'll get to it. And of course, we'll get in the quick plug at the top. Uh, listen to our podcast, Golden Edge Podcast. We just recorded another episode, Adam, and I think, you know, it's pretty solid. And if you forget those Twitter handles, if you have like, you know, you, you don't hear well, you see it better, it's right there. It's right, right there. on the screen. You can see it and then send us comments and questions and everything else. And We'll even tweet out all of this stuff, so then you yeah. can follow us on Twitter and then find the links to it. It's a high-tech production here we got going here at the RJ. We well, uh, spent a lot of time at CES, so that makes did. a lot I of did. sense that we would have a lot of high-tech uh, qualities about our program. Absolutely. I took diligent notes. I was there for a couple days, and now I'm back ready to rock. So let's get to uh, some of the stuff that we got this past week, uh, starting with, uh, let's actually just talk about Brandon Peary off the, talk because, off the top, because most of the questions and comments I got... Seems to be a hot subject. He's a hot subject. Yes. I got a lot of questions and comments about Brandon Peary this week. But, of course, a lot has changed recently in terms of Brandon Peary's status, thanks to Saturday's game against the Chicago Blackhawks, where he played his 10th game with the Golden Knights, Adam. Yeah, and so he is now in a position where he would have to go through waivers to be sent back down to the minors again. He's been sent down, I don't know, 13 times this year. Feels uh, like it. But if they want to do that again, they would have to make him available on waivers. That means mm -hmm. any other team in the league could pick him up. So the translation on that, he's not going down again. He's not going to be placed through waivers. They're going to keep him up on the roster. So Brandon Peary, for the foreseeable future, is a member of this Golden Knights organization and of the NHL roster because no more options to send him back down. Right, and it'll be interesting to see where it kind of goes from here. Right now he's playing in place of an injured Riley Smith, and Brandon Peary's got two points in three games filling in for Riley Smith. Now once Smith gets back healthy, it'll be interesting to see what they kind of do with Peary. Do they try him out on the third line? They've mentioned a lot before that he's kind of a top six player, and that needs to be his role. But at this point, with how well he's played and how much he keeps producing and scoring, I think it's fair for the Knights to give him a shot on that third line just to see if he can do it because he succeeded about everything else they've asked him to at this point. Yeah, and listen, the knock on him always has been like he's just a scorer. He can score goals, which I know some, a lot of people are like, well, that's very important. Of course it is. But if he's struggling defensively, if he's not involved, um, you know, in, in some, you know, scrappy plays in the corner trying to get the puck back, those sorts of things, like there's only certain things that they think he can do. That's why he's bounced around to a lot of different organizations. But the fact of the matter is, he has been incredibly productive. The third line has not for the most part this year. Like at some point, a change like this and making a move like this to get him involved and put him on the third line makes a lot of sense uh, from a lot of different standpoints. So I, I would think that he would get an opportunity there. Uh, they'll try him out on the third line. They'll see what he can do. And like the knock, we said that's a knock on him, but for this team, he really hasn't been that much of a liability on the defensive end. He's been pretty good. Um, they really haven't given up a whole lot when he's been out on the ice. Not, in, not just in terms of goals, even in terms of chances. So uh, I think he is playing at a different level right now, not just from a production standpoint, but also from his overall game. So I, I think that they'll find uh, ways to get him involved on the team. But he's also a nice guy to have. If they are going to scratch him, he's a nice guy to have to just be able to plug in and know that you're going to get a, you know some production out of him if you have to put him in for a game or two here and there. Yeah, definitely not a bad break glass in case of emergency option. Let's move on to another player in the Knights' top six right now, uh, Jonathan Marchessault. He did not make the All-Star uh, roster. He was up for fan voting, and I got this wonderful comment uh, from Daniel Judd. Uh, boo! Clearly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> clearly that pretty is not upset. a question. We've, we've, we sometimes break down, is that a question or a comment? That's a comment. I know because of all the exclamation marks at the end. He was very upset. Yes. So, yeah, to recap, Jonathan Marshall was one of eight players eligible to be voted on the Pacific Division All-Star Game roster. He did not make it. Daniel clearly upset about that. You know what? It's Daniel's fault. Vote more? I mean, it's not, we're not going to single out Daniel, but listen, this was all about fans. Fans got to vote in the last guy. If fans are disappointed in, in the fact that he didn't make the roster, the only person they can blame is themselves for not voting enough, right? Yeah, well, that's one way to look at it. Uh, 
Now, Jonathan Marshall, I would say, wasn't the Knights' best candidate to get no. in, though, even if he was you know, eligible to be voted in. I think Alex Tuck is having a really strong season right now, so he would have been my pick to represent the Gold Knights in that competition. Every team got a player that was eligible to be voted in. So Alex Tuck, he got 37 points in 40 games. He's playing outstanding. He would have been probably my choice. If not, I think you fall back to William Carlson. He's a guy who has one fewer point than Marshall Salt in the same amount of games, but he's so much more important to what this team does on the defensive end. And Carlson is a true 200-foot player. He's great on the penalty kill. And so I think his all-around impact is maybe a little bit more than Marshall Salt, even though, as I said, he's one point kind of behind him right now. Tuck would have been my choice uh, to be mm -hmm. on, that, on that vote, but I will say this. It would have been very interesting to see how many votes Brandon Peary got. Like, Brandon Peary was the <laughs> obsession of fans here, but I'll also tell you, he was the obsession of the hockey world for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks, and it just so happened to coincide with that voting period. I would have liked to see at least him be on there. Not that he was the most deserving player necessarily, but just to see how that voting would have turned out. He got out. a Don Sherry shout out. That was important. That's, that is true. Like, the hockey world was completely obsessed and infatuated uh, with him for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. could, he have, could he have carried that into maybe qualifying the voting? Perhaps. It I guess been, we'll never know. Would have been an interesting storyline, and we wouldn't have had to see the boo with nine exclamation marks. Yeah, a lot of emotion. Uh, we'll move on to uh, another one of my favorite comments from this week. Uh, this is in my Twitter mentions from at RNMama23. Sheesh, people, get your flu shot. <laughs> okay, this is a good This right. is also, uh, you can tell, it's a comment. Yeah. Exclamation mark, yeah, not a question. Uh, this is coming after uh, Will Carrier, Knights Forward, is put on IR with an illness, so we are told. We were also told uh, earlier this week uh, backup goaltender Malcolm Subban was not feeling well, so they had to bring up uh, Maxime Lagasse for a game to serve as a Golden Knights backup goaltender because of uh, Subban not feeling well. So it seems like sickness might be spreading around the locker room a little bit. I think this happens just about every year in an NHL locker room. You're around each other a lot. You get pretty close to each other. A lot of sweat being put in that locker room. So... You know, not probably the most healthiest place to be, and so that's how these illnesses kind of spread throughout a team. Uh, yeah, two things. First of all, uh, we're in the locker room also, and I feel like that's what happened to me this weekend. I got sick. I think it was because I'm just going to blame the, the team for being around, and maybe that, that was the problem. I think that's fair. Uh, it's, it's really hard to avoid it this time of year, but I think the, the other thing you have to look at is when, when you hear the Golden Knights say somebody is sick, it doesn't always necessarily mean they're sick. I phrase it very clearly. They said Subban was not feeling not well. Not feeling well. Not necessarily that he was sick. Doesn't mean that he had the flu. Like I like the point here because I do think that there there has been some illness, and you see that every year with every team, there's illness going around the team. I mean, it's impossible not to for all the reasons that you mentioned. Uh, but I don't. I just don't think when we hear not feeling well, because you know we did hear Max Petretti early in the year was not mm -hmm. feeling well. Turned out his groin was not feeling well, and that's mm -hmm. uh, that's what happened. That's why he was. Uh, missing time, but um, yeah, I, I just I'm with the point on this, and it's certainly an issue that can come up with flu spreading around the team. But I don't necessarily think that just because somebody is not feeling well, I'll put do the air quotes, <laughs> that that means that they're sick. It's true. All right, let's get on to uh, some fun CES stuff because I we mentioned I was at CES last week. I got to sure. check out some uh, cool stuff, including some cool hockey stuff. And here we've got uh, someone no. commented, uh, amazing scene from Disclosure 2. I don't know if you get the, everyone gets that reference because it's don't. kind of an obscure movie. Yeah. Basically, it's you know futuristic sci-fi movie. And here we got uh, one of our RJ Entertainment columnists, Chris Lawrence, trying a hockey virtual reality equipment. Uh, it's a company called Sense Arena. I got to swing by, check it out. Really cool technology. Basically, they've got a little addition to the hockey stick there as well as the headset. And you can do virtual drills. So is, that, is that a virtual goalie trying to stop his shot up there in the top right, by the way? Basically, yeah. So you can kind of see the screen, uh, what he's looking at, basically through the headset. They got a virtual goalie. Uh, I was told by uh, Patrick Elias, who's the New York, or New Jersey Devil. You I messed that up on that, the podcast, yeah. too. Yeah, uh, the New Jersey Devil's all-time leading scorer. He said the virtual goalie is actually uh, pretty good. <laughs> you can see in the background there, too, that's uh, Boston yeah. Bruins sniper uh, David Pasternak with the stick. He's a big proponent of this company. So some cool things going on in the uh, world of hockey technology some there. Very cool things. First of all, the goalie does look pretty good. That's a tough yeah. shot. Uh, I would have liked to see you doing this. I think that would have been mm -hmm. a helpful touch for our program here for the review. And I also say, 
Listen, I love Chris, great guy. Uh, that's n that's not a great shot, right? No, I mean, not great form. Don't try that at home, kids. Yeah, that's. I mean, the 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 feet are just the feet are terrible. I feel like that's an awful position. Yeah, maybe don't shoot flat footed. That's kind of you yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, listen, an issue. Chris, I love you. Sorry, but um, yeah, that's not that's not great. Right. But like I said, if you actually you know do want to try this out and maybe get more out of it than Chris did flat footed, uh, it can be available for the low low price of uh, almost four thousand dollars. So. Oh, is that it? That's How it. How many yeah. did you buy? Oh, well, you know. Three. I got some uh, you know cousins that are in college hockey right now, so I felt nice. you know wanted to subtly send them a message to <laughs> raise their game. Very generous. Yeah. It's nice of you. Right after the holiday season, got some good. birthdays coming up. Good to go. Solid uh, well, gift. Yeah. I think we're going to be good to go uh, on this edition of the uh, Golden Edge Mailbag. Once again, thanks to everyone tuning in. If you've got comments, you can leave them on our Facebook page. I'll try to get to them next week. Uh, if you want us to answer in real time, at Ben S. Goats, at Adam Hill LVRJ, or my email is bgoats at reviewjournal.com. Thanks for staying uh, up to date on all your Golden Edge information with us. Remember to check out reviewjournal.com, the Golden Edge podcast that Adam and I do, and the Golden Edge Mailbag here every week. Thanks for tuning in.